What's up, it's Andy Filicotti and welcome back to another video. Today we're shooting on the Canon EOS R5. Now, if you don't know what this camera is, it's a very hyped camera from Canon and it just came out last week. So what better way to get to know the camera than to do a first person video where I go through my impressions while I'm using the camera. I'll also film a few video clips and we'll see if we can get the camera to overheat. Let's just hop right into it. So right now we're at the United States Capitol. I uh, figure we walk around the grounds and see what kind of shots we got. Uh, right now I have the 16 to 35 millimeter on. I also have an RF lens and another uh, EF lens that we'll uh, test out here. But for right now, we're just gonna use my favorite lens. Uh, just right away from first impressions, the grip compared to the EOS R, way bigger. Definitely feels like a 5D Mark IV if you're familiar with that. And of course on the back of the body, you can see that they removed the touch bar. Probably one of the most hated features of the EOS R. And uh, of course now you have the classic Canon joystick here, which works great. When I did go into the settings at first, I had to enable uh, using it for your focus point. But once you turn that feature on, you're good to go. Let's take a few photos here. I always love when the Capitol has its lights on. Nice little reflection there. One thing they also change is the back of the screen now tells you what dial to twist rather than uh, just guessing like you had to do on the EOS R, which that's a really good change in my opinion. So in addition to photos, I'll take a few video clips and we'll see if we can get the camera to overheat. Uh, let's put it to 4K, 120 FPS. Of course, to go to high frame rate mode, you have to go over here. I do hate that uh, UI choice, but other than that, it works pretty good. And of course the flip out screen that everybody loves. This is one of my favorite spots to take photos because you can get a reflection of the Capitol. Looks like there's some water too we can get in the puddles in here. Let's go back to photo mode. They also added a dedicated magnify button here, which is a welcome change. Let's get a little closer here. The camera also shoots uh, 20 FPS photos, which I don't have much use for, but it's nice to have that option. So we'll try that out in a couple of minutes here. I actually have the IS mode off for some reason. Let's turn the uh, image stabilization back on for the sensor. For photos, I've actually found this to be a super welcome change. It's super easy to take long exposure photos while hand holding it now. Um, you know, nothing crazy, just a couple seconds. This is one of my favorite angles here of the Capitol. Plus you can get a shot with no tourists. And one thing you couldn't do previously is knock the auto ISO off. So right now you can see I'm on auto ISO. Uh, it's about a 1200 ISO. But if I just knock this dial right here, you can see now I'm on manual ISO. So let's try manual ISO of 100. And we have a 1 13th of a second photo, now 1 10th. You can see it's kind of stable when I just hold it still. It's from the IBIS, but let's try to take a few photos here. This is where the uh, burst mode comes in handy too, because you can just hold it down. Let's uh, increase the burst speed here. We'll do the highest option. And you can see how many photos we're taking there. Probably one of those will be sharp. So let's swap out a lens here. Let's put on the 85 EF lens. Now, one thing I love about Canon mirrorless cameras is they actually have a little cover that covers the sensor. So when you're swapping lenses, you don't have to worry about dust getting into the air. Start shooting again. Always gotta wait for the flag to wave to get the right shot. Let's get a couple slow-mo clips of the flag here. You can really see how well the IBIS works here. Let's try a video with the IBIS off real quick. Turn it off. And I'm trying to hold it as steady as I can here. And then I'll shake my hand like I did previously. And I'll just show those on the screen to compare them. The IBIS definitely helps a lot though, I can tell. Oh wow, the sky is crazy tonight. This is the one view that you can get the uh, Washington Monument in. And you can see uh, the old post office building in the distance.
Okay, now let me swap to the RF lens. So now we're on the RF 35 millimeter. This is actually the cheapest lens that Canon makes for uh, this mount. I actually bought this because the adapters are sold out now for the EF lenses, so I just figured I want a reason to use my R and R5 at the same time and not have to swap adapters. So, um, so far I've been liking it. This lens is pretty solid. Let's see if we can get some B-roll with it. And you can see now our time is actually limited to five minutes now. Previously, it was about eight minutes, so the camera is definitely heating up a little bit. Get a photo of the capital through this puddle here. Didn't turn out the way I thought. You can also see while I'm shooting video, there's now zebras. So you can see what areas of your photo are overexposed or underexposed. Sky tonight is just great. You can just see how stable this is though. Let's go down to ISO 100. You can see, uh, hold on. We'll do F4 uh, and we're at a sixth of a second right now. So I'll take a burst so we can definitely get a sharp shot. Last one was a little blurry. Oh yeah. I'll punch into these so you can see how sharp they are. So I think the GoPro is a little low light now, so let's go over to the uh, fountain at the Library of Congress to get a little more light. Gotta love getting reflection shots. And obviously with this flip out screen, it makes it extremely easy. Also, if you have the EOS R, you might be used to the indent for the flip out screen to be up on the top right but now it's on the uh the right here on the bottom right makes it a little bit easier to grab granted my muscle memory is still trying to grab it up from that area and just for the sake of uh, our knowledge knowledge let's go into the menus go to uh, movie recording mode we're going to turn off the fast uh frame rate and we're going to go to 8k uh 24 fps or 23 uh all i and you can see we only have five minutes of recording in that mode which is normally something that you would have uh, I think like 17 minutes in, so it's definitely taking an impact on the heat right now. Now let's go back over to slow-mo. I have noticed that this lens hunts a little bit for focus. Now let's try to do a long exposure photo to get the uh, water still. I'll go to ISO, uh, we'll do 400 and we'll do F4. No, nah, let's do F8, why not? Okay, so this is a one second exposure. Gonna hold it as steady as I can here. I'll take a few shots so I know I get it. Let's see how much slow-mo we have left. Four minutes now. So you can definitely see how shooting photos and shooting videos at the same time eats into that battery life. Um, I'm, I was only filming 120 FPS clips, but uh, in 4K. Let's get another photo of the fountain here. Handheld, of course. Uh, so it's attempting to do ISO 8000. Let's bump it down to ISO 400 and we'll handhold it and see what we can get. So I think that's it for this video, but let me swap back to the Canon EOS R5. So I'll start recording on that now. So you can see I'm still shooting on the uh, RF 35 millimeter. I hope you like this video. Let me know if you like this format. Just want to try something a little bit different there. Uh, definitely check out the camera if you're interested in shooting both really great photos and good video. Of course, the overheating is going to be an issue if you're in a more professional environment. But uh, other than that, I'm, I really love the camera so far. Obviously, I recommend the Canon EOS R also. Definitely a great camera. But uh, that's all for this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and uh, thanks again for watching. Watch it. Thanks again for watching. See ya.